General Razak began to ask his own questions about the assassination. He was there when it happened and says he never saw Khalil Islam in the ballroom, nor did anyone else. Nobody, nobody of the hundreds of people in the Audubon ballroom, many of whom had been in the nation of Islam, right? Nobody identified this brother as having been in the Audubon ballroom. Now, that's impossible. There was supposed to be friction between those of us who were in the OAU in the Muslim mosque and the Nation of Islam, right? Mm -hmm. That Malcolm had left. Several days later, it's announced that Thomas 15X Johnson, whom we know as Khalil Islam, was picked up for the execution of Malcolm X. And you knew that he wasn't there because I you saw the gun. I knew as sure as God made green apples that he was not there, but strange things can happen. So I went to everyone who was in the nation, who had been in the nation, and was now in the Muslim mosque or the OAAU, and I said, did you see, did you see uh, Thomas? No. Did you see Thomas? No. Now, Reuben Francis, who was arrested for shooting Talmadge Haya, must have seen the people who were running out of the Audubon ballroom, right? Mm -hmm. He never testified that Thomas was there. Benjamin 2X Goodman, the late Benjamin 2X Goodman, or Benjamin Kareem, was on the rostrum. He knew everyone that was in the nation. He could not identify Thomas is having been there. As a matter of fact, he said he wasn't there. Not only that, but Khalil Islam has provided us with what he says is the sworn testimony of Benjamin Goodman. These papers confirm that Goodman was a member of the Fruit of Islam and had a close association with Norman 3X Butler, another convicted assassin, and Thomas 15X Johnson. Khalil Islam. In these papers, Goodman says that he was an assistant minister to Malcolm X and that on that fateful day in the Audubon ballroom when Malcolm was assassinated, Goodman says he was the one who gave the introductory speech before Malcolm took the podium. He says he introduced Malcolm as a man who would give his life for the people. He says also it was while giving that speech that he scanned the room, and he says he never saw Butler or Johnson, whom he knew well, in the room. But Goodman admits that he had left the ballroom by the time Malcolm actually started speaking and by the time the shots rang out that killed him. Now, according to Goodman's affidavit, over the next several weeks, he was repeatedly questioned by the authorities, the NYPD, even the FBI, about Butler or Johnson's possible involvement in the murder of Malcolm X. And Goodman says he repeatedly and consistently told the authorities that they were not present. And when that wasn't good enough, he says, according to this sworn testimony, Goodman says the authorities tried to convince him to change his story and even threatened him with jail time but he says he still wouldn't do it. Benjamin Goodman was never called to testify in the criminal trial of either Butler or Johnson. Later, uh, another gentleman came forward and said that he was the one uh, who knew about this, Talmadge Hare. Oh, that was much later in the trial. He came, he came much later, but he finally said that you weren't the one and that, uh, that he was involved and some others, is that right? He said him and four others were involved. He gave the names, the addresses, they grew up together. He gave the address where they used to work. All the childhood activity, because they came from the same community. He gave all that up. I have that in my possession. And what happened? After another person comes forward and confesses, what happened to you? Well, the DA said that uh, he heard too much of the trial, man. You know, now he wants to exonerate this guy. You know, if he did it in the beginning, it might have had a different effect. But the DA played it like that.